two. I now call to order the meeting of the Building and Contracts Committee for Monday, January 8th, 2024. In accordance with board policy 8311, the chair of a committee at their discretion and after consultation with the staff liaison may convene an in-person committee meeting. Otherwise, all committee meetings will be held electronically. Today's meeting is being held virtually and broadcast through Microsoft Teams. In order to conduct this meeting efficiently, all voting items this afternoon will be done by a roll call vote. Board committee members will say their names before making and seconding a motion, as well as when requesting discussion on an agenda item. Additionally, as a courtesy to the committee, I ask that you inform Ms. Faya or myself if you must leave the call by using the team's chat feature so that a quorum can be maintained. Ms. Faya, will you please call the roll to determine the presence of a quorum of the committee? Thank you, Ms. Harvey. Mr. Young? Here. Ms. Henn? Present. Mr. McMillian? Present. Ms. Harvey? Present. Thank you. There are four members present. Thank you. And now, Ms. Faye, will you please call the role of staff members participating in today's meeting? Thank you. Ms. Ms. Margaret Ann Tiley? Here. Dr. Melissa DiDonato? Present. Dr. Jess Grimm? Present. Dr. Raquel Jones? Present. Uh, Mr. Pete Dixit. Mr. Dixit. Dr. Doug Elmendorf. Present. Dr. Kimberly Ferguson. Present. Ms. April Lewis. Present. Ms. Megan Shea. Present. Ms. Jennifer Kraft. Present. Jennifer Hernandez. Ms. Hernandez Kraft. is present, but doesn't have audio to unmute for some reason. She's <laughs> listening. I appreciate it. Thank you. Uh -huh. Mr. Brad Kahujan. Present. Mr. Merrill Plate. Present. Ms. Melanie Webster. Present. If there are additional staff participating that were not mentioned, please state your name now. Debbie Somerville. Thank you. Oyende Onijala. Thank you. Thank you, Ms. Harvey. Thank you. Okay, we're going to jump right in. Uh, we have contract number one, summer learning programs for middle schools. For that, I call on Ms. Webster, who is filling in for Mr. Hartlow. Ms. Webster? You're muted, Ms. Webster. Still muted. Thank you. Good evening. Our first contract is CWA-112-24. This is a summer learning program for middle schools. This will be occurring in 17 middle schools and includes a summer literacy and math curriculum. The total spending authority for this contract is $1,275,000. Any questions? Madam Chair, I have one. This is Ms. Hen. Ms. Hen, please proceed. Thank you. Good evening, everyone. Um, this is, as I understand it, a separate curriculum from that which is used during the academic year. Is that correct? Hi, Ms. Hen. This is. Oh, go ahead. Know. I'm sorry. I was going to ask you to respond, Mr. Elman. Okay. <laughs> Hi, Ms. Hen. Hope you're doing well. Happy New Year. Uh, this is Doug Elmendorf. Yes, this is separate from um, what is happening during the school year. So kind of as a really quick overview, the high schools are going to continue with credit recovery as we've done in the past to get as many students across the stage um, as possible in the summer. 
And the elementary schools are going to be used the, using the curriculum that they use during the school year because both of their curricula uh, include summer programming features. The middle school curriculum is not only being replaced in the near future, but also does not include uh, summer programming. Um, and even the, the, the curriculum that's being piloted also does not include summer programming um, as well. So yes, this is a separate curriculum uh, than what is used during the school year for middle schools. Could you elaborate on that if you wouldn't mind as to why a separate curriculum is needed for middle schoolers versus using the existing? Sure, so um, we're really, I'm sorry, what was the last part? I'm, I'm just saying since so many of our students need need help and this is a fantastic program, I would just like to understand more, so thank you. Sure, yeah, I, I anticipated that we would wanna talk about why we're not using the um, curriculum that we use during the school year because we are in elementary school. And so um, again, the middle school curriculum um, is, is, is current, the middle school curriculum that we do use during the school year is up to be replaced. So we wouldn't wanna use a curriculum that's gonna be replaced in the near future necessarily um, in the summer. And like I said, the, the, the curriculum that we are piloting doesn't have a summer component to it and it's being piloted. And we also wanna move away from what we have done in the past, which is an in-house STEAM um, curriculum, um, we wanna move closer to an evidence-based curriculum design specifically for summer programs, which this program is very much uh, specific to summer. It's very focused and it directly addresses and measures progress um, as it relates to literacy and mathematics needs for identified students. This particular curriculum is approved by Mar the Maryland Leads Initiative, which I know you're familiar with. It's also approved by MSDE specifically to um, address state standards and close achievement gaps for students in the summer. And one thing I would say is that it was a really strong perk to this, if you will, is that it inc includes professional learning for teachers that actually extends beyond the summer. We know that our teachers have um, some difficulties because they're so busy during the school year um, accessing all the professional growth opportunities that they would want to participate in. So this is a, an extra bonus here that we get to have um, teachers work with um, professionals to develop their professional um, uh, growth in, in the summer during the uh, summer programs, it's embedded in the program itself. So they have uh, six hours of actual uh, professional growth opportunities um, within the summer program itself. Thank you. And we know we can't get enough um, opportunities for professional growth and development. So that's good to hear. I'm, I'm curious as to why other than the structuring in terms of timing for a summer schedule, are there other advantages to this curriculum over say the curriculum we are piloting that put this at an advantage because I'm I'm still being asked why do we need two separate curricula this is an additional thing for teachers to learn um, can you respond to that and that'll be my last question I know we need to move on thank you Dr. Amendorf you and I can jump in um, sure. hi Miss Hen how are you hi how are you happy Bye. new year Thank you, you too. So part of the decision was um, what well, Lavinia is very um, based on instructional standards. And so when teachers really understand the standards that they're teaching, that knowledge, as Dr. Elmendorf had um, you know, alluded to with regards to the professional development, will carry over whatever content, um, whatever materials are used for that content. Part of the decision was we have not finished the pilot for the current ELA curriculum that we're um, looking at right now. And depending on that, we may move forward with it. We may decide that we need to pilot one of the other products. Um, we might decide you know, that we need to further look at that. So without having a full uh, decision made about the ELA curriculum that we're currently using um, for that pilot, it would be premature for us to look at that for our summer program. The ELA curriculum materials that we have that are currently being used you know, widespread um, are outdated and no longer meet the needs of our district, hence why we're looking for something. So to perpetuate that in a summer program um, was a decision we really did not want to make, but rather providing an opportunity for students to participate in an evidence-based program um, that has you know, very positive results, both um, in the state of Maryland and schools, school districts, as well as um, across the United States. Uh, really seemed like a great opportunity for our students, as well as the support and resources that it provides for teachers. Thank you, Dr. DiDonato. And of course, we want 
the evidence-based curriculum um, in the hands of our um, students and educators as soon as possible. So that makes perfect sense and why we want to move with this. Um, in the other ELA curriculum that packages that we're looking at, do those include summer components or was that a requirement when considering um, which product to purchase? I'm going to actually have to defer to uh, Ms. Shea because I was not included in the original, I was not here in the original, uh, or uh, Dr. Kraft in the original process uh, for that. So I will defer to them to answer some of those logistical questions about it. I get to talk to everyone. Hi, Ms. Shea. Hi, Hi, good evening. Happy New Year, Ms. Han. Happy New Year. Um, so no, it is actually unusual to, to have a specific summer component in our elementary curricula. We actually are very excited about it. Um, and the secondary, it was not a part of the RFI because that is so unusual. That's not typically included um, and it is not a part um, explicitly in the curricula that we're piloting. Um, typically what's happened before if you stay within a curriculum you're using during the year is you're picking and choosing pieces of the curriculum to revisit. What's so exciting for us about the elementary curriculum and hopefully will be a part of what happens moving forward they actually intentionally have these two modules that can do a complete review of all of the key standards for that grade level through a genre study, which is exactly what you want in a summer program. Um, that is not currently the model in most other publishers, to be quite frank, and it is not something that was included in the RFI for the secondary pilot. Thank you very much sure. for that information. Are there any additional questions? Uh, sorry, hearing none? Sorry. I just oh, wanted to oh, mention sorry. that it's not unusual for our middle school teachers to have a, a different curriculum in the summer. Like I said, we used a an in-house STEAM curriculum previously. Was That was not the same as what they were using during the school year. So that shouldn't be too um, big of a shift to be doing something different in the summer than they were doing during the school year. It's the same standards, but just a different curriculum. Thank you. Understood. Thank you very much. Uh, we'll move on to the next contract. Ms. Webster. Certainly. Contract number two is ASI 80220. This is a modification of an intensive reading program. We are requesting an increase in the spending authority uh, to allow for additional kits that were purchased or would like to be purchased through Title I funding and also to provide additional professional learning for new reading specialists and special educators. The amount of the increase is $180,000, bringing the total to $580,000. Thank you, Ms. Webster. Are there any questions? Hearing none, we will move on to the next contract. Ms. Webster? Certainly, contract number three is ARA 213-19. This again is a modification for an increase in spending authority with the sheltered instruction observation protocol. And on this contract, we will we are asking for an additional 400,000, which will be used to bring us through the remaining term of the contract. Are there questions? Hearing none, we will proceed with the next contract. Ms. Webster. Next contract is number four, KSH 322-16, Language Essentials for Teachers Reading and Spelling. This is an assignment, so a modification of this contract from the current vendor of Voyager Sopris Inc to Lexia Voyager Sopris Inc. Are there any questions? Hearing none, we'll proceed with the next contract. Ms. Webster. Next contract is JBO 715-21 Tier 2 or 3 phonics space interventions. Again, this is a modification for the assignment change in vendor name, uh, exactly the same as the last one from Voyager Sopris Learning to Lexia Voyager Sopris Incorporated. Are there any questions? 
Hearing none, we'll proceed with the next contract. Ms. Webster, please. Certainly, the next contract is JBO-724-23 Health Services Software. This is a new contract um, for software to be used by our health school health services staff. And this um, software both meets the state requirements and supports the creation of required state reports on the school health services program. It will also provide a parent portal. Spending authority for the full term, four year nine month term of the contract is $1,102,858. Are there questions? I have one, Madam Chair. This is Ms. Hen. Uh, please proceed, Ms. Hen. Thank you. Ms. Webster, is this for the same product that we are currently using? I believe we use this particular product, but not in this, not this module. And um, I see Ms., uh, both Ms. Somerville and Dr. Ferguson are here, if they can confirm that for me. Go ahead, Deb. Good afternoon, Ms. Hen. Yes, this is the um, this is essentially the incumbent product, and we'll be rolling out the parent portal part. Hi, Ms. Somerville. Thank you. I appreciate the clarification. Are there additional questions? Hearing none, we will move to the next contract, Ms. Webster. Next contract is number seven, JBO-706-20. This is the School Resource Officer Master Safety Memorandum of Understanding uh, with Baltimore County. This is a modification changing the scope and increasing the maximum contract spending authority. This, uh, the increase in scope will provide additional services for um, extracurricular activities and will also provide, um, yes, we received, applied for and received funding to allow for school resource officers to provide services during those extracurricular activities. And as a result, we are uh, asking for an increase for $1,219,285. Are there questions? Mr. McMillian, please proceed. This Lewis here, yeah, great. I see her. So I see this is a grant for for one million two hundred some thousand dollars. Is this a federal grant or state grant? It's coming through the state. It's coming from the state. And how do the athletic directors, if are, is it being scheduled through the Office of Athletics, or are the individual athletic directors requesting? you know, uh, 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 these, the services of these SROs or police officers or whoever. So Mr. Sai provided a schedule of all of the activities and the activities had been shared with the Baltimore County Police Department. And so they work to schedule officers, particularly our SROs to work those games. If SROs are not available, then they do offer that to other members of the department. I happened to stick my head into a, a, a tournament back a couple of weeks ago, and the athletic director was was complaining that there was no communication between the local precinct. So he he was told he was getting, you know, I'm not say three officers, and it, there was no confirmation there. And one officer didn't show up, and and you know, here's a a man that has hundreds of people in his gymnasium, and there was no no communication on. Who was the police officer being assigned and that kind of stuff? So it just seems to me that it, there's a there's a breakdown in the communication between, you know, the precinct and the athletic directors and knowing who's who's supposed, to, you know, if somebody's running late, you know, give the athletic director a call. If they're if they're not showing it up, the athletic director needs to know. They're just uh, there's a breakdown there. Can we improve that somehow? Certainly, that is something we're working on. And so what was communicated to schools is that if they put in the request 
unless the request could not be filled, then they would uh, assume that they're going to have a person. But we do know that sometimes things do happen at the last minute with our officers. And as we receive that information, we communicate it to schools. I just want people to keep in mind, this is not the only source of security that we have for those athletic events. They are to use their security vendors. They have contracts for that. And then the SRO adequate coverage grant is to add to the security that we already have. So we're allowing our student safety assistance to support. We have our security vendors through that contract, and this is an extra layer of support. But we are working to refine that um, communication, and I'll take that back to our partners. So, so to get this, so you're saying that an athletic director, let's say his basketball schedule, he should have the outside vendors already yes. lined up and scheduled and be ready to pay them, and this, the, this money is going to supplement with additional police officers to that venue that he already that's has correct. covered. Yes, that's correct. And quite honestly, that's I, I, I'm, I'm just you know it just seems like a waste of money. I mean, if if there's already if they already have them covered, and I know I get intense about this because I was in that situation, and I know what it feels like when you don't have security and you're looking for security, and where is it? And you've got hundreds of people in a facility, and and it's you and and a couple of teachers that are covering. I mean, that it, it is a dangerous situation that needs to be addressed. Thank you very much, and thanks for listening to me. I know I'm intense. Thank you. <laughs> So this is Mrs. Harvey. I just have a clarification. I heard you say that there are a, a couple of different options that we already use in terms of security for the schools so or for extracurricular activities during school after school hours. This this memorandum of, of understanding provides additional security to fill gaps. Is that is that what we're talking about here? Because I, I think there was some, you know, there was a statement about it's all covered. Then why do we have it? And and I'm just trying to see what the purpose of of this additional security is. Right. So the additional security is to provide additional people to support schools. So they are to start with their uh, contracted vendors, and most of them use maybe two. It depends on the activity that's taking place. Sometimes they use more if they know um, that it's a high profile game and there have been um, issues in the past. This contract is uh, with the Baltimore County Police Department is to provide that person. And, and in many cases, it's the SRO who's familiar with students um, and we're looking for a, perhaps a different response from them, but it is in addition to, and because these are Baltimore County police officers, they can be called away for an emergency that happens in the community. And this is something extra additional to what athletic directors have been told that they are to provide for their schools. So they're not to stop using the security vendors, stop using the student safety assistance, but there was a request for additional support, not a replacement in the support, but additional support. And so we have allocated two um, police officers to each of those events, the football games, the basketball games, and some other athletic activities to provide additional support. And there are different things that the um, vendors that we contract with us um, can do in terms of enforcing school rules as opposed to our police department. And those officers are really dealing more around criminal behaviors that might be occurring. But it's additional Thank you. support. Thank you. That that clarifies that. So we're we're supplementing the security that we have in there, and it's a different level of security with a different level of response and enforcement powers. Correct. Our security okay. vendors cannot arrest. If an arrest needed to take place, that would have to be a police officer, and they would have to call the police department. This way, as much as possible, we have them present for their role as police officers. Okay, great. Thank you. That's very helpful. Ms. Hinn, did you have a question? Yes, thank you, Ms. Harvey. Um, just to clarify the funding that's available to our schools to use officers in this capacity, and this is very exciting because I know schools want this ability. Um, our contract exhibit states under justification for increase that no funding was added to the original MOU for this purpose. Is that referring to operating funds versus grant funds? 
the MOU was not funded at all. There were no funds. So the MOU is our partnership with that involves our SROs that aren't paid for by Baltimore County Public Schools. And so this is the only funding that's attached to this MOU. Is the grant funding. Thank you, yes. Ms. Lewis. And, and that those funds are available to schools on a first come first serve basis. Is that how those are so, allocated? When we wrote the proposal for the um, secondary schools, it was to cover, I believe it was 4,000, um, was really 2,000 events with two people at each event. And so we do prioritize. We did cover all of our football games. We looked at covering all of our basketball games and then additional money was left over some other kinds of athletic events and to cover our proms as well as our junior and senior proms. Perfect. Thank you very much. Are there any additional questions? Hearing none, we'll proceed to the next contract. Ms. Webster. Certainly contract number eight is NTA 508-24 Foreign Language Interpretation and Translation Services. This is a new contract. Um, the exhibit says assignment, but that is in error. This is a new contract. This will provide supplement. This will supplement an existing contract and provide additional firms who are able to provide interpretation and translation services for our schools, for um, communi the communications department, as well as uh, through the ESOL program. Are there uh, questions? Oh, I'm sorry. Okay. Go ahead. Are there any questions? Hearing none, we'll proceed to the next contract. Ms. Webster, please. The next contract is JBO-713-19 Field Trip Transportation Services. This is a modification of an existing contract to extend the term and increase the maximum contract spending authority. We are increasing the term of this contract so that um, when the schools are scheduling spring field trips, we have established vendors in place. The contract was due to expire mid-year, um, which did not work well for schools when setting up field trips. So we are extending this through the remainder of the school year and we will rebid in the summer so that that expiration date coincides with our school year moving forward. As a result of the extension, we are asking for an increase of $515,000 bringing the total contract value to $10,515,000. Are there questions? Uh, Mr. McMillian. You know, I've been on this committee for five years and I just feel like I don't have a grip on this. Is this money, are, are individual schools, does that mean a school can do a field, don't have transportation costs? Probably not. So they're going to, as they, if, if they do a field trip someplace, they're going to calculate in the cost of transportation into that. So, so that money goes to pay for those field trips. Where is this money go? Mr. Graham, Dr. Graham. So good evening, Mr. McMillian. So basically, although the uh, Office of Transportation or Department of Transportation is listed as the department for this particular contract, it really just facilitates this service. Um, the spend authority and, and as you said, the field trips, the users of this are the, the schools vis-a-vis -vis athletics and other field trips. Um, so again, uh, operations and specifically the Department of Transportation are really just the carrier of it. Um, this contract just gives the spend authority so that schools within the school system can utilize these funds for field trips. I hope that answers your question. So if, if, if an elementary in the Southeast area is going to the zoo, they can request some of this money to cover the cost of the transportation. Nope. No, no, sir. There is no, there is no actual money. This is not money that's provided to the Department of Transportation or anywhere else. It, it simply gives the school system the ability to spend the money um, on this on this particular service with these contractors, with these vendors. So the money isn't in one specific pot. 
collectively as a school system, it gives us the opportunity to have this spend authority on what are called field trip services, which are those trips that you've identified. Um, athletic events are, are, are also part of that. As I said, the Department of Transportation is is the carrier or the or the listed department on here because of um, they they assist purchasing with the safety aspects and, and taking a look at the contractors. But there isn't really one place where this money sits because it's spent across the, the system to fulfill the responsibilities of this contract. OK, so it's up to 100, 176 schools. Excuse me. Mr. McMillian, if I could add to Mr. Dr. Grimm's explanation, when that Thanks. elementary school decided to go to the zoo, they collected the money from the students for the entrance fee to the zoo and they broke out how much the bus would cost and they assigned that per student. So when the student, when the family provided the money for the student to attend that field trip, the school then takes up the transportation portion of that and they create a purchase order for those services. That purchase order uses a, the school's money that they have collected from the student to pay for the services. Okay, and so we can pay up to all the collectively 176 schools can can buy services basically up to that 500 some thousand dollars. And then at that point, they we have to stop. Correct. That is correct. OK, thank you. And thank you. Athletics very much. are also a part of this as well, Mr. McMillian. So as an athletic director, when you booked your trips and you received money from the Office of Athletics and it was earmarked and you had to use these specific vendors, it also goes toward the spend authority on this contract. Thank you very much. You're welcome. Are there any additional questions? Hearing none, thank you, Ms. Webster. We will proceed with the next contract, and for that, I call on Mr. Dixon. So, good afternoon. Um, can you hear me? Good afternoon. Can yes, you hear me? Yes, we can hear you, Mr. Dixon. Thank you. Okay. My apologies for using cell phone because my team is not working, so I'm using cell phone. So, the first contract we have tonight uh, is the GDA 301-22 for third party qualified elevator inspection services. This is just <clears throat> approval is to extend the contract by one year and increase contract spending authority by $73,333, bringing the revised total contract spending authority to $260,000 with the two original awarded contractors. The work is required uh, as per the state regulations. Are there any questions? Hearing none, we'll proceed with the next contract. Mr. Dixit, please. The next contract is ASI-801-22. It is for professional services, and what it means is testing services during construction. <coughs> this is the extension of the existing contract, second of the four-year options. Amount is 1,600,000. No addition request for the funds. It's the same amount. And uh, the testing is required during construction process. If you recall, during major projects, testing is one of the package for construction. This is for those projects that are systemic and non-major project. Your approval is requested. Are there any questions? Hearing none, we'll proceed to the next contract. Mr. Dixit, please. So next board exhibit is really not a contract. It's an information item. MWE-804-24. And we just want to share, apprise the board that the superintendent's team is in the early stage of exploring the use of Pikesville Armory to complement Northwest CTE Center, which is included in the board approved capital plan. The space could be used if deemed feasible as a complementary facility, which could include instructional space, retail space, 
as well as a full kitchen. Uh, and once once the details are sorted out, if we decide to go in that direction, uh, at least we'll be uh, coming to you for your approval with all the details. Thank you very much for that information item. Are there any questions? Hearing none, we'll proceed Sorry. with the next contract. Ms. Um, Harvey, sorry. I'm sorry, I was trying to unmute. I have one, ma'am. Okay, Ms. Hen, please proceed. Thank you. Um, good evening, Mr. Dixit. Good evening. Um, thank you for bringing um, this to us, and that's exciting news regarding the Northwest CTE Center. Um, will the board also be receiving similar notification of site identification for the Northeast and Southeast High School projects? And do you have any idea of when we'll be receiving those? So I don't have that information now at this point, but it is general practice to share these things with the board. When these studies are done uh, at the right time, we share that information with the board. Terrific. And at what point roughly in the um, planning process does that occur? So it could be as part of the next capital program submission. And if the superintendent decides that she wants to share that before we, before that event, we will be more than glad to share that with you. So the, we're receiving. I I'm asking for clarification because we're receiving this outside of the the capital submission. So mm -hmm. is that the process by which we would receive notification for the other projects as well when so, the sites have been determined? We try to keep board informed of these things at the right time, and we'll share any other item that we have complete knowledge of when the studies are complete. We'll share that with you either in the superintendent's bulletin or in, in these meetings. But the, the agenda item is, is developed through the committee and the superintendent's office. Sure, thank you. Thanks. Yes, because the board Thanks. received a report recently indicating that both of those projects were 90 and 99 percent complete respectively so i didn't know if you had a targeted date in mind to bring us um similar items for those i can discuss that with the superintendent uh, the in the 90 and 95 percent number is for this study i just want to clarify that yes sir thank you okay Thank you, Mr. Dixit. Please proceed with the next contract. The next item is NTA 504-24 for boiler replacement in Lansdowne Middle School. The uh, amount is $582,340. Funds are from a grant and there were seven bidders and the lowest bidder is Floatron. Are there questions? Hearing none, we'll proceed to the next contract. So the next contract is MWE-802-24, and this is a request item for Northwest, Northwest Area CTE Center. Uh, the, the request here is for board's approval to utilize the site uh, that was uh, with the camp field Early Learning Center. Board approved a study for Northwest CTE Center for evaluation, evaluating various sites. Board also approved Northwest CTE Center as part of the capital program uh, on September 12, 2023. And camps, the closure of Camp Field was approved by the board on September 12, 2023. The purpose of this request is for board to approve Camp Field uh, Running Center site for the proposed Northwest CTE Center that is part of the approved uh, capital plan. And just as point of clarification, construction is not targeted until all relocation of students is complete from Camp Field uh, Learning Center. So we'll need your approval to proceed uh, with the design. Are there any questions? 
Hearing none, we'll proceed with the next contract. Mr. Dixit, please. The next contract is NGO-408-24 is for the installation of a security vestibule at Parkville High School. It's a capital project that is funded by the local uh, county funds. There were three bids received. Lowest bidder is Baltimore contractor, and the amount is 297097 which includes contingency. Are there questions? Hearing none, we'll proceed with the next contract. Mr. Dixon? So the next contract is JHO-702-24. This is for placing pre-K um, renovation within the existing school. Uh, there is Baltimore Contractors is the only bidder. The amount including contingency is 300,177. And it also includes an ad alternate for acoustical ceiling tile replacement. Are there questions? Hearing none, we'll proceed to the next contract. Mr. Dixit, please. The next contract is NTA-506-24. This is for replacement of three boilers at Sandalwood Elementary Schools. There were seven bidders. Uh, it's a grant funded project. Lowest bidder is Denver Elk and the amount is 539,550, including contingency. Are there questions? Hearing none, we'll proceed to the next contract. Mr. Dixit, please. The next contract is NGO-402-24. It's for Timber Grove Elementary School, uh, spaces for pre-K pre classroom, within the building there's only one bidder uh, and the amount is 405,777 including uh, contingencies an ad alternate for ceiling tile uh, replacement uh, has been included has been accepted are there questions mr, mr. mcmillian mr mcmillian please proceed yeah mr pete so are they looking at these elementary schools and and adjusting the design in order to create a couple pre-K classrooms? That's about what it is. Wherever we can uh, create a space for pre-K, we are doing that. Uh, it is done in consultation with curriculum and instruction. They have identified schools uh, working with our planning office. And once we know that this school is a candidate based on their criteria for pre-K. We encourage that and we try to uh, reconfigure space within the building to provide pre-K. That appears to be the most cost-effective way of meeting this need. So if a, if a school building was, a, you know, the old open space and there are still some elementaries out there like that, so they would look at those open spaces and then somehow try to branch them off or put walls up and create pre-k spaces so it's not limited to open space only if there is space period uh, then it is reconfigured to meet the ed spec for a pre-k environment which is slightly different than the regular classroom so whenever we can do that reconfigure the space uh, it could be existing classroom, it could be existing space of other type that working with the principals, we find that it can be, it is available. So we just go ahead and redesign and reconfigure those spaces. Okay, thank you very much. Okay. Are there any additional questions? Hearing none, Mr. Dixit, will you please proceed with our final contract? The final contract, DEI-611-23, is for children replacement at Woodlawn High School. It's a capital project approved by the board as part of the capital plan. There were nine bidders, and the lowest bidder is Denver Elk, 
amount is 759,660, including contingency. Are there any questions? Hearing none, I'd like to thank our presenters today for the information you've provided. We are now, I will now entertain a motion to recommend that items one through 19 be moved to the full board for approval. Is there a motion? So moved, Young. Thank you, Mr. Young. Is there a second? I'll second it. Rod McMillian. Thank you, Mr. McMillian. Thank you. Ms. Faya, may I please have a roll call vote on the recommendation of the approval of contracts one through 19 for board action? Thank you. Ms. Han? Yes. Mr. McMillian? Hi, Mr. McMillian. Yes. Thank you. Mr. Young? Yes. Ms. Harvey? Yes. There being four in the affirmative, the motion passes. Contracts one through 19 will be moved forward to the full board. The last item on the agenda is announcements. The next building and contracts committee meeting will be held on Monday, February 12th, 2024 at 5 p.m. Is there <coughs> any further business? Hearing none, the meeting is now adjourned. Thank you for joining us. Have a good evening, everyone. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.